Hello everyone and welcome to a very nice game from round 5 of this year's Qatar Masters. Uh, it is Vaishali versus Shamsin Invokid of, of uh, Uzbekistan and um, uh, you guys requested this game for several reasons. One, it's a, it's a very nice game, it's played to almost pretty much perfection. And another thing, uh, this tournament is 160 players and Vaishali here uh, is uh, currently number 13 ahead of Magnus Carlsen who is in 14th place and Gukesh who is in 15. Uh, and bear in mind, She's, uh, she still hasn't uh, gotten her, her Grandmaster title. She's still uh, an international master. And she's, uh, well, playing some incredible chess. Uh, so let's check it out. Uh, here she has the white pieces. And we have a very, very cool line uh, of the uh, Khan Sicilian. E4, we have pawn to C5. Knight to F3, pawn to E6, and D4. Captures, captures. And now not going for knight to F6. And then A6, like you see in the knight of... Uh, here we have pawn to a6 right away. This is the Khan variation, and um, uh, there are not... Uh, okay, there are a lot of games um, with the Khan, of course, not nearly as much as uh, of the Knight of. Uh, but after she played pawn to h3, there are maybe three games in the database with this um, exact same setup. So this is uh, already can be considered a completely new position, uh, but I will not call it uh, just yet. Knight to c6, knight captures, b captures, and bishop to d3. And here, uh, there is a game where queen the C7 was played. It was actually played this year. Song Edward um, ag against Luka Bodisavljevic in Washington, and um, uh, the the game was uh, won by uh, Song Edward. Uh, but here we have knight to f6, and it is now as of move 7 that we have a completely new game. Now, we usually say if you're allowed to play d5 in the Sicilian, you should just play it and you're going to be okay. But here, uh, it's not so clear. For example, d5 castles, what do you play? You don't want to capture and uh, undouble uh, uh, and mess up your pawn structure. Then you have, uh, you're you going to have an isolated a and an isolated c pawn. And uh, uh, you can just capture with a bishop. And if a queen trade happens, you can capture with the rook. And if knight to f6, uh, let's say knight to d2 and g6 now, you want to, uh, for example, fianchetto, there's b3. Very annoying. And now if bishop g7, bishop a3 just stops castling. And you're going to have to resort to some bishop to f8 moves. And it's not maybe uh, the best. So while d5 will be played and should be played, maybe not uh, right away. So first we have knight to f6 going after the pawn here. Uh, castles and now pawn to d5. So playing it um, uh, after after uh, developing a piece, we have knight to d2 and now not going for g6 because of b3. We already said that this will be quite annoying for black bishop to e7. We have pawn to b3, castles and now bishop to b2. We have pawn to a5 trying to um, mess up the uh, pawn structure on the queen side with pawn to a4 and Vaishali stops it by playing pawn to a4 herself. Uh, and uh, well, okay, uh, c5 maybe Maybe it does look like a, a move you want to play, but uh, it's not all that spectacular. For example, queen to e2, and after queen to c7, rook a to d1. And now, if you if you want, you can close the position with d4, but then you allow knight to c4, then maybe in the future e5, knight to d6, uh, and so on. Maybe giving white a little bit too much. So instead, knight to d7, uh, this is a, a, a great plan, because if you look at the position now, uh, Vaishali has uh, two uh, uh, incredible bishops here. I wouldn't call them monster bishops just yet uh, but once the light square bishop opens up it's definitely going to be a bishop pair from hell while the bishop on e7 and bishop on c8 uh, aren't doing all that much so by playing knight to d7 you want to trade off your uh, dark square bishop for the dark square bishop on uh, b2 and also your light square bishop for the light square bishop on d3 so this will be the next step of sharp sitting's plan uh, we have rook to e1 and now bishop to f6 uh, we have bishop captures and uh, not, not much you can do about this trade Queen captures and now knight to f3 with bishop to a6 trading off the other bishop as well uh, and now e captures on d5 first c captures and bishop captures on a6 with rook captures on a6 and now pawn to c4 so uh, okay uh, Shamsidin did uh, get the trade off the, the two uh, bishops uh, but now he allowed pawn to c4 which uh, cannot be taken as the knight on d7 would hang and uh uh you you could play something uh maybe something like well it, it, it's very hard to say in the game uh rook to d6 was played uh, uh but the, the the pawn still will not be able to capture on c4 as the rook on d6 is also uh hanging it's not a, a blunder or anything you it can be played it's just very difficult um, uh, to actually play it and here we have queen to d2 
uh, going after the a5 pawn. And now the way you want to play this is play rook to a8. You just defend the pawn and now after rook a to d1 you bring the queen back. Queen to d8 while your rook is nicely developed and defending the a5 pawn. However, that did not happen in the game. After queen to d2, uh, Shamsidin tried a different approach. He played knight to c5. He said, all right, we trade the a5 pawn for the b3 pawn, and then I capture on c4 as well. However, this uh, is uh, a bit problematic for black. Queen captures on a5, we have knight captures on b3, and now queen to b4, attacking the knight and the rook, and now knight captures on a1. Grabbing the rook here, queen captures on d6, and now knight to c2, attacking the rook on e1, and now it seems like uh, uh, he solved all of his problems, but there is one huge problem for him. The game is completely winning for Vaishali. Uh, feel free to pause the video and try to figure it out while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on uh, figuring out that black is completely busted. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is rook to b1. And now the problem is you cannot capture on c4. Just to give you an example, if d captures on c4, rook to b8, and that's it. There's no defense. Rook captures on b8 or queen captures on b8 is coming. If you trade, then just queen captures, queen to d8, and queen captures on d8 checkmate. So uh, this is a huge problem for black. So of course, uh, you have to, um, uh, you know, add more support to the back rank. So queen to d8 was played, offering a queen trade and keeping an eye on that b8 square, but now pawn to c5. This does give black a pass pawn, but also the white pass pawn is now, um, well, unstoppable. We have knight to a3, attacking the rook, now rook to b7. We have knight to c4, going after the queen, and just queen captures on d8. Rook captures and pawn to c6. The pawn is now unstoppable. If you, of course, try rook c8 and just c7, followed by rook to b8, that will not work. So in the game, king to f8 was played, and now pawn to c7, rook to c8, and rook to b8, going after the rook. So now you block knight to d6. Uh, and now knight to d4. This is key. If you try a5, which seems like it should be winning, uh, also a king e7 unpins the rook, and now rook captures on c7 is possible. And if you trade here, rook captures knight, captures a6, the knight actually covers both a7 and c8 square, so you will not be queening either of your pawns. So after knight d6, knight to d4, the only winning move, by Charlie plays it, and now... Uh, there's really not much to play for. Uh, king d7 was played, now knight to b5, attacking the defender of the rook on c8. And uh, even if you try something like knight captures on b5, which seems like uh, maybe you maybe it could work after rook captures on c8 uh, and king to d7, rook to f8. That's the problem. Yes, you do win the c7 pawn, but then rook starts gobbling up the king side pawns. King to c6, you're going to capture here. And yes, you can push the d4 pawn, but rook captures on a7. And if d3, king f1, easily stops the pawn so not much to play for here so after knight to b5 we have pawn to d4 uh, and now king to f1 uh, the king now joins uh, the attack you don't have to play it right away but uh, you know you don't um, uh, waste time or anything it's it's a useful move that will have to be played so pawn to f6 and now pawn to a5 uh, there's really not all that much you can try here uh, king to d7 was played, and now knight captures on d6, finally removing that uh, the defender of the rook here. Rook captures on c7, uh, if you go for the knight, of course, the rook just hangs, so you can't play that. King captures on c7, uh, also just rook captures on c8, um, uh, impossible. So rook captures on c7 was played, but now knight to b5, and he was in this position on move 35 that Shamsin Invokidov resigned the game, as there is nothing more to be done here. Uh, so he he's down a piece, and okay, you can maybe throw in a few more moves like rook c1, king e2, and rook to a1 going after the pawn, but after rook to a8, there is zero counterplay here. Even with some fancy moves like pawn to e5, you, you will play pawn to a6, and if rook to a5 
going after the knight because you cannot advance the pawns as long as the knight is here. This is covered by the king. If you push this, the knight captures on d4. And if you attack the knight, you can even sacrifice the knight because after rook captures, you can just move the rook and promote the pawn to a queen next. There's really not uh, all that much you can do here. Rook captures, rook captures, and now the, easy, uh, the, uh, the uh, rook easily defeats a long king. Uh, so yeah, very nicely done by Vaishali, and um, like I said, uh, she is uh, currently number 13 ahead of uh, Magnus Carlsen and Gukesh, and her opponent for the next round will be Gukesh himself, so we'll see if, uh, how she takes on a, a former member of the of the uh, top 10 in World Classical. I believe Gukesh is now number 13 in, in Classical Chess, uh, but still 27.58, that is one, one uh, uh, strong opponent, so we'll see how Vaishali does. So far, she's undefeated, three wins in two draws uh uh you know very few people in the tournament can actually say that uh so yeah uh, that's the game hope you guys enjoyed it uh well, very weird variation especially since after the the con variation was met with this h3 very weird stuff but this just means that they avoided all theory and they had to start playing chess uh, pretty much from from move one uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to wish a very happy birthday to Ayushi, and uh, I would like to thank Nagarjuna Ponogoti, David William Grasberger, uh, Avery Ferrero, and uh, Tucker Berkman for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions uh, and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.